So there's a whole bunch of history that goes into a lot of this. Bacon and pork is basically what allowed long distance sailing. <laughs> that and like salt cod and things like that. Because they could put uh, these bellies or any other types of pork, Boston butts for example, on salt and just pack them in casks in a ship and they had a constant source of protein. But usually it was over salted and they would have to soak it or put it in other dishes where the salt would actually add to the dish. But over time people have figured out that you can actually weigh this and know how much salt it will take to be good bacon, palatability, and for curing. So those numbers for salt are between 2 and 3 percent. So we usually hit the middle. So for most of these we've done 2 and half percent salt. So we weighed this belly, took 2 and half percent and got 39 grams. That's what the ladies over here are measuring for us. So the cure for this one is real simple. It's two and a half percent salt. I measured that out. And Al's got some Himalayan pink salt. It doesn't have to be Himalayan pink, though that's a good one. Um, don't get confused, though, because Himalayan pink salt is different than what some people call pink salt or Prague powder or um, nitrite or nitrate, which is a little bit different. Um, so this is just a, uh, a sea salt, basically, rock salt that has like trace minerals and things, that's what makes it pink. Pink salt, that is a cure, like they'll call it cure number one also. It is salt mixed with 6.25% sodium nitrate. And then it's dyed pink with uh, beet juice. That's why it's pink. And it's dyed pink because if you were to use it like we use regular salt, like in dishes, you could die because of the, um, uh, the quantities. Cure number one, which is what we would use for a lot of this stuff, like bacons, um, it, uh, the sodium nitrite is a, um, it binds myoglobin. So myoglobin is what makes the meat red. So Al's bacon here, when he's done curing it and smoking it, will not be as red as normal bacon because we're not putting sodium nitrite in it. Some people really like the pink, rosy color of bacon. And this is not going to have it because we're not putting cure number one in it. And we'll talk a little bit more at, about it as we go. But I just want to make sure you know that this pink salt is not cure number one. It is just Himalayan pink salt. And then we've got black pepper in there. And then we're going to do some maple syrup. And I did 3% maple syrup, which is high. Which is high for sugar content. Um, because maple syrup is not pure sugar. You know, I think it's like, maple, sh maple syrup is like 60%. At our farm, we have a vacuum sealer. We don't ask people to buy a vacuum sealer. But what's gonna happen, <coughs> is we're gonna put this belly in a bag that we can seal. And when we put it in the bag, we'll put all this cure on it and we'll rub it around inside the bag. Maybe not with our hand with maple syrup, but. We'll put it in the bag, and we'll suck as much of the air out as we can, and we'll seal it up, and it's going to go in Al's fridge. And scientifically what's happening is the salt is going to start pulling moisture out of the, the meat. But because we have it in a bag and there's no air in it, that salt, that brine that's formed, goes back into the meat. So the equilibrium part of this is that the salt is going to um, come to an equilibrium with the meat, so we know that we have 2.5% salt throughout this whole thing. Does that make sense? Traditionally, they would just sprinkle salt on it, the water would leach off, and they might sprinkle a little bit more salt on it and the water would leach off. But it was hard to measure how much salt you're getting on the meat, so you can, it's really, 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 really easy to over-salt bacon if you're doing it at home. So this is a way that we show people, because when we first started, we over-salted bacon all the time. And it was really disappointing because you took all this time to raise these pigs, yeah. you butchered them, and then you get bacon that's like way too salty, and it is very disheartening, and you're like, what are we doing? Like, we wasted this whole belly. So we, when we're teaching people, we tell them to do it this way, and look at what they have. So over time, when Al does this, he'll know that a belly about that size, he'll be able to start eyeballing it with a lot of accuracy. But when you start, if you measure it, um, 
you're kind of guaranteed to have a good product. Now you might want to change things. This might be too salty for Al's family. He might want to go down a little bit, or he might want to go up a little bit, or the sugar might not be enough. But because we have this record of it, and we label this bag, and Al keeps track of which bacon this is, the next time he makes bacon, he'll say, oh man, that maple one is my favorite. You can't <laughs> drop down 2% though, right? You have to stay at 2 mm -hmm. or up. To have a curing amount, and this is kind of a funny conversation, it's a good question though. If you drop down below 2%, the bacon is not going to keep as long. Okay. And you can't hang it up and expect it to not go bad. Because the salt, when it pulls out the moisture, it's also inside the meat, which makes it inhospitable for bacteria and things. Now if Al cured this and hung it up in here, it would probably get mold on it. Which doesn't mean it went bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. When it goes bad, it will stink and he'll smell it from his bedroom probably. <laughs> it'll be like a rotting, it'll be rotting flesh. So mold is not bad. And in fact, sometimes, like on the prosciutto, we'll talk about it more, you might get green molds or you might, there might even be time you'll get a black mold or a red mold. That doesn't mean it's bad. And it's all superficial. Um, but anyway, the curing amount, you could do less than 2%. Like if you did 2%, you're like, that's still too salty for me. You could do less, but it would be one you had to keep in your fridge and you'd want to eat it pretty fast. Okay. But we use, I mean, 2.5% with a sugar, because the sugar kind of balances out some of the salt. So you can play with those numbers. Um, to get what you want as far as your taste. And that's why we're only curing two of these today, two of the bellies, because Al's got some in the freezer, and he says, you know what, I didn't like the maple syrup one. I like the brown sugar one, but I wish it had a little bit more salt. He can adjust all that. And it's all percentage-based, so it, it's not dependent on this. You know, you might read recipes that says five pounds of belly and two and a half cups of sugar. Like, that doesn't really... Then you, then you get like concerned about cutting off like exactly five pounds of belly, which is kind of a pain. This way it doesn't matter. Um, so, it's also nice because bags like this, I told you to get two gallon ones. So, uh, just sugar, uh, black pepper, and put it on there. And I'll let you guys do the ones after this. And I'm gonna rub this in. If you have a wet ingredient, it's better to put it on after the dry stuff is rubbed in. Um, and the meat receives the sugar a lot, or the salt a lot quicker. I'm not worried about the skin side right now. And we did leave the skin on. A couple reasons for that. It's a lot easier to take off after it's cured. It's more rigid. You can get your knife right under it and just peel it right off. And I would recommend that Al do that before he smokes it. It's not like the end of the world, but uh, the skin sometimes will keep it from receiving the smoke on that side as well as it could. So it's not that much, you know, you can, there's not much extra. It's way less than I've seen people. Yeah, that's why people always salt their bacon. I've seen people just bury their bacon in salt. And, and you can do that if you know how long it's going to be in there. But that's a, that's a very nuanced thing and it's very dependent on when you get to it and all other stuff. And so then the maple syrup, which isn't a ton, and I told Al earlier today, um, you can always glaze sugars on top of them as you're smoking. <coughs> And if, if he smokes this and slices off a chunk, and it's not as, he, if he doesn't have the maple flavor that he wants out of it, he can put more maple. Um, and then the nice thing about these bags also is I can rub this in without getting my hands completely sticky and mess. And with a vacuum sealer, it just makes this process a little bit easier because it pulls everything real tight to the meat, so you know it's all on the meat. But I'll suck the air out of this. And then the only other thing we do different for the back, for the Ziplocs, is I'll tell Al, flip it over like once a day, just to make sure everything's getting mixed. And you, you know, you can rub it around, because all the sugar and salt that we need is in here. You know, you're not going to add anything extra, but you want to have all of that come in contact with the meat. There are ways to, uh, like a lot of times when people do, they'll do like black, um, molasses cures, uh, which is another good sugar to use. You can also brine cure doing the same method. The only thing you would change, like if you wanted to make a brine instead of putting it in a bag, you just drop it in water. You have to account for the weight of the water. So if I had another 
2,000 grams of water, I would take the percentage of the, <coughs> the water and the bacon together. If that makes sense. Because it, it's going to, the so salt is going to equalize the between the meat and the water. <coughs> so you can do brines that way too. I'm just rubbing this around. And I'll suck out the air. There's that. And then he'll put it in his fridge. I usually do it meat side down because of the water as it leaches, but it's still good to flip around every once in a while. But usually we'll do like a number and a date. And then we I keep I use Google Keep and I just keep cures in there. I write the recipe on it. I take a picture of the cure. Like I would just take a picture of this and like do number one and put a number one on here. It's just record keeping. I'm usually terrible at it, but I'm trying to get better. So the one thing about that, some cold smokers are completely like airtight. So the smoke goes up through them and goes out and no new air is really introduced. That is a case where you would be careful and you would probably want to add cure to this. Cure number one, which is sodium nitrite. Um, it's actually sodium nitrite mixed with salt. But you would only put in 0.25%. Okay, so not like a quarter of 1% for this. So in this case, it would have been, you know, not even, or right around 3 grams. And of that 3 grams, only 6.25% of that is actually sodium nitrate. But the reason you would want to do it is because you'd be putting it in an environment where it's anaerobic and the right temperature. Yeah that in a crazy world could get botulism. You know, the chances of that happening are really, really slim because we haven't punctured this meat anywhere. Um, but they're not zero. What's that? But they're not zero. Yeah. Not zero. <laughs> and, but in our smoker, new air comes into it all the time, so it's not an anaerobic environment. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do it in the winter time, when it's cold, you're not going to have the right temperatures for it either. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the sodium nitrite conversation is is an interesting one. I think a lot of people got to it because it doesn't necessarily hurt anything and it's just another safeguard. Uh, we don't do it because we know we don't need to but it's good to know why and why not. What's the minimum cure time before you want to smoke it though? Even if, so like you said 10 days is that about it? Like, you yeah for time. bellies I mean you could probably get away with like six or seven. I tell people 10 just to make sure. Because then it gives the time, it gives the salt time to equalize throughout. You know, you could probably cure it in like four days, but it might be salty, saltier in some spots because the salt hasn't had time to travel well, through the meat. So 10 days, good, good rule of thumb? I think so. For bellies this size. Now this guy I would probably tell Al a solid two weeks, maybe a little bit longer. Because it's thicker. It's going to take longer for the salt to equalize through it. Is this going to be the best bacon? <laughs> <laughs> Rub it right into the meat, just like you're giving it a massage. It's just like this one. So this one's all covered. 